Hello, Chess World. Did you miss me? You know what, Hans? I think I did. Ever since you recorded that six weeks ago, got back to the online content, then US Chess Championship, now the FIDE Grand Swiss Open, the chess world feels a spicier place, full of drama, and there's theatre not only off the board, but in Hans's chess. He plays an exciting brand of chess, and that's why this is one of the pick of the games of the day for me. His opponent as well was not backing down. He's a young Norwegian, 18 years old, Elam Amar, on his way to become a Grandmaster, don't be underestimated by the IM title, and this has an awesome finish to it. So we get E4, C5 Sicilian, now Knight F3, D6, Hans goes for an open game, these Knights develop, and now we get Knight C6, no A6, going for a razor sharp Nidorf. We get bishop g5, the main move, rapid development, immediately putting pressure on the king side. e6, the so-called Skaven Ingham pawn structure, the hardest word in chess to pronounce, I reckon. Everyone butchers it, including me. We get queen d2, you can see where this king is going. a6, black looking for rapid expansion soon. Castle's queen side, bishop d7 developing, and after f3, bolstering the centre, ideas of g4 later, black continues with bishop e7, king b1, always play king b1 right, and knight takes on d4. Why would you voluntarily do this and centralise the white queen? Well, after queen c7, we see some of the points. Your heavy pieces can now use the c-file, and you did activate that bishop once you got rid of the knights. Hans now drops back with the queen, not forced at all. He could have gone h4 there, g4, left the queen there. But okay, it tucks back, supports this bishop. Loose pieces drop off, they say, so always good to see your undefended pieces. We get b5 attacking, h4, h6 played, and after the bishop drops back, now we get h5 and the bishop comes back. So what's that all about? Why didn't that move just get played in one? Well, it's actually a secret to becoming a grandmaster. If you want to get there, then play a weird pawn move, kick the piece back, then push the pawn one more square so the piece can come back. You're on your way to becoming a grandmaster. Chuck in a few mysterious rook moves. You know, you're a month away or so. So we get b4 played, kicking this knight. It drops back to e2. Now we get a5. Here come the pawns, rumbling, classic minority attack. And this now is just a fantastic move. It is a move I would never think to play. It shows Hans has done his homework and understands the position. So the move he plays here is pawn c4. Now why would I not consider that? Well, not only are you leaving it to be captured, but you're allowing black to take here, on person, knight recaptures, you've just opened lines of attack, you're pushing pawns in front of the king, but after say rook b8, white has some amazing defensive resources, a4, you carry on this kind of wild chest, you know, pushing pawns in front of your own king, but you actually get a big bind on the b5 square, the rook's coming to c1, and with computer analysis, it says it should be okay but you're brave going for that one. So on person doesn't offer so much. What if the queen captures the pawn? Well, now there's this devastating pawn to e5 move. You know, you really have to be prepared. Now, if the pawn takes, this is simple enough to refute. You've just opened the d-file, so you chop the knight and then you capture a bishop. You're doing great, of course. And if instead then of capturing, you move this knight, obviously you can't go d5, you'll drop your knight. So if you jump into d5, well now you kick the queen from the c-file, it's only got two squares available, so okay, say queen b5, and then knight f4, and you open the bishop's attack. So the queen moves again, and then you start liquidating in a favourable way, you're hitting the rook, now you could get rook d8, and this kind of liquidation, you know, you're ripping open the king, materials level, but you've got this huge attack. <coughs> Excuse me. So coming back here, taking the pawn, no good, on passant, no good. And so black's really struggling with what to do and eventually pushes pawn e5. I mean, look at that for a think. 45 to, was that about an hour think? You know, really tough to decide what to do. 
you weaken these squares when you play that move. But there was also threats of the knight coming to d4. So this is actually one of the top computer moves, but it's a tough position for black. We now get knight g3 from hands. So he's targeting one of the newly created weaknesses and the computer wants to go g6 immediately, but then you're weakening more dark squares. You know, it's never easy at this absolute elite level of chess knowing quite what to do. So we get rook d8 played, and this is a nice idea from black. It's all geared up with trying to get in this d5. You know, if you do this immediately, well, hands is gonna chop and chop, and you're looking for d5 soon, even if not straight away. These are the black ideas. But what we see played here from hands is bishop e2, developing, connecting the rooks. We get bishop e6, threatening this pawn, and it's really easy to go wrong. You know, say you go b3 to cover that pawn, bang, black is better with pawn a4. You're ripping open that a file by force. If you take here, obviously it gets really scary. If you don't do anything, well, black's taken here and here, and these heavy pieces can start switching over here, whoops, like that. So these are some of the problems if you go b3, but Hans finds the absolute best response here. He goes for knight f5. Now on the surface, after bishop takes, pawn takes, it looks like this should be bad because of pawn d5, which was played. But actually, castles was best. Though that looks equally scary, you know, g4 coming soon. So d5 played. This was Elam's idea, but there's a tactical problem. After bishop takes, which hands plays, you can't make the move, which I'm sure Ellen wanted to play from afar, which is pawn takes on c4, opening the rook's attack. Can you see the tactical problem with this if black had gone for this line? So the move you can play here is queen takes on d8, an epic sacrifice of the queen, because after that's captured, you land this check, reminiscent of that famous Paul Morphy game, although you're not checkmating, you're just winning the queen. <clears throat> Sorry, can't get my voice tonight. King recaptures, and now you're simply a bishop up here, doing great, of course. So this is the tactical problem after d5, bishop takes, with pawn takes here. So black has to recapture. Technically best was pawn takes, but we get bishop takes and this one recaptures. That's why pawn takes was now better because then the bishop would be here already blockading this pawn, whoops. But with the bishop there, you now have to spend a tempo dropping back to blockade. However, black doesn't do it. Castles was played, allowing d6, but this is positionally horrible. The queen moves. Suddenly you've opened the diagonal for the bishop. And after g4, this one is horrendously hemmed in. Can't retreat here, can't come here. g5 is coming, winning that piece. So that's why e4, chucking a pawn simply to open a square, you can take here with a good game, but Hans finds an even better move. He goes for queen to d5, taking away this square from the bishop, and again g5 is a threat to trap it. So what does black do? Well, go for b3, try and create complications, and now if you go g5, well, there is a small attack. Shouldn't be working, but after check, you have to tread carefully. You know, if king takes, the queen marches in, and now you're actually losing after bishop takes because you're ripping everything open. So that would be no good, taking that pawn. If you sidestep bishop takes, you still start ripping things open. White should technically be doing okay, but why allow any of this stuff and win a bishop like that? Instead, Hans takes that pawn. Now rook b8 played. So it does give this bishop a square, but after g5, black doesn't use it. They have to go for initiative, so a4 is played. Look at the clock situation as well. Huge pressure on young Ellen. So we see this one captured now. The bishop drops off. Pawn takes, and this is the idea. Invade with the queen, deliver some kind of mate. Imagine if you could block the c-file as well. But Hans is cool now. He goes queen d4, covers the a4 square. We get queen takes on f5. Ideas of taking here with a discovered check and transferring the queen like this. But Hans plays the best move. You know, you could go for queen d5, allow that pawn to drop, but stop the attack. But Hans goes rook h to g1, allowing the queen to transfer, but then crashing through here, check, and dropping back with the rook. 
classy move. There were other good moves there as well, by the way. You can take with the queen and that kind of thing. But hands drops back, hits the queen, also threatens now to take with check and then land a mate using the two rooks. So check was played, the king sidesteps, the queen now holds this pawn, so there's no queen a1 check and that kind of thing. That's why check, king d2, check. The king can now step actually to e the square, runs to e3, and after king h7, we get check here. The king comes up the board, and now can you find a checkmate in two? There are a number of mates here, mate in four, mate in seven, you know, that sort of thing, but mate in two is the best one. So the way you do it here is with rook takes here, and that caused resignation. Because if the king captures, this is quite a nice one, because you not only deliver the mate, but you protect the pawn, stop the king capturing, and this one covers this square, this one covers this square. Very nice using the pawns. So Neiman, always exciting to watch. Really great game, this one. I hope you enjoyed. Smash subscribe to never miss a recap of this tournament. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, check out the video on the screen. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.